Ah, buenos días. Oh, excuse me. Es para mí? Sí. Rob, Rob Sharp? Sí. Ok. Ah, libro. Ok, gracias. Gracias. So I want to talk to you about Amazon just in general. Uh, when we first moved here, we weren't sure exactly how to use Amazon and if we could use Amazon and if it was going to even get to us. And so I want to tell you a little bit about that. Now, Marvi and I um, worked for Amazon, albeit for a very short period of time. Amazon is huge. I mean, they've got conveyor belts going all over the place that wind and twist through these giant warehouses. And there's hundreds and hundreds of people that work on every shift, 10, 12 hours a shift. Um, it's a lot of work. So just wanted to let you know if you ever open up your Amazon package to really think kindly of these poor folks, even if there's a mistake, it does happen. Do they have an option to do a Mexican Amazon? And is it safe? And the answer is absolutely, absolutely. Now, the great thing is you have an option. Now, folks, I'm going to talk about comparing Mexico to the United States because I don't live in Canada or anywhere else. So for people who have both or would like to use both, I would suggest that you do that. There are pros and cons for placing an order in Amazon in Mexico or Amazon in the United States. The one thing they share in common is your account. Once you enter your information, and you can do that on the American side, it's the same as in Mexico. So the important thing, though, is if your banking system and that you normally use in in America, you keep that onto your your billing address. That's really critical. You change that um, to Mexico, and unless a bank has that as your billing address, um, it's not going to work. It's not going to go through. So be sure that you do that. The other thing is when you do the. Um, Ordering the products, <clears throat> that's where you would put your Mexican address. Now, I want to say something at the very end that is going to ensure you get your package. So if you don't listen to that and you make the mistake, don't kill the messenger, okay? So hang on till the end. I'm going to tell you the one critical thing that's very, very important. So the next thing you want to know about when you're putting in this stuff is that whether you use the American or the um Mexican one. The Mexican one, of course, is in Spanish. It's for people who live in Mexico. But that's okay. Don't panic, folks, because if you do not speak Spanish, let me say this again, if you do not speak Spanish, you can use a translator in your browser. Google Chrome, wonderful. Set it to translate any um, website that you go to into English and bam, it's all taken care of. Now it's not going to translate images that happen to have text as part of the image, but the main 99% of everything you need will be translated for you. The physical locations. Okay, so the interesting thing is when you do American there are American distribution centers. In Mexico, there's Mexican distribution centers. So clearly the Mexican distribution centers are going to get things to you much quicker. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be cheaper to always do that, and I'll get to that. So another, so those things are similar. They both have distribution centers. They both have another similarity is that they charge you a VAT, a value added tax that you aren't going to get if you just live in one country and you order that product. So if you live in America and you order from American Amazon, you don't get a value added tax. You get state tax, you know, maybe, but not a value added tax. So that tax in Amer in yeah, in Mexico is about 16%. It may not show it on the American pricing until you are in your final checkout or even 
yeah, that's probably where it's going to show up under taxes and shipping. Um, but in the Mexican site, it's actually part of the price. It's already figured into that. Okay, so if you notice a little bit of a difference on the listed price of the item, it's because the Mexican one is going to be including that. Now, are all prices equal? No. If you, for example, if you order, for example, sage, I like to use sage over the holidays for my Thanksgiving and, and dressing and turkey and things like that. It's kind of an expensive uh, spice. If you go to the American uh, site and you type in and you get this spice, it's going to be $8.47 and then you tack on your little bit of 16% VAT and whatever and it's a consequential shipping and you'll get it for whatever $11, $12. Still expensive, but it's sage. Okay. However, if you look at the site of the Amazon Mexico, it's like uh, 859 pesos. Now that does include the VAT, but that's like $50 American. It's re I mean, my turkey dressing is really, really good, but not $50 good. No, I, I wouldn't do that. So in that situation, I would order from the American side. So just be aware that there are those differences in prices sometimes. Now, the other thing is why would I order um, from the American one if it's not really based on price, all things being equal. Well, the product itself, when I order my laptops, uh, my computers, I get them from America because I want an, uh, an operating system in English. I want the keyboard in English. So be really careful and don't be surprised if you order a laptop in Mexico and you've got a Spanish operating system uh, and you have to convert all of the other programs to English, but it also has a Spanish keyboard. If that's not a problem with you, then just pick the one that, that you would like. The other thing that I really, really love about Amazon while I'm in Mexico is it's, it's well, I've never seen a, a great bookstore. I've never seen a Barnes and Noble here. Maybe there are, is in Mexico City, but I don't live in Mexico City. So when I want a book, there is really no resources that are going to provide the books that I would want. However, here's just a few of the books that I really have enjoyed ordering on Amazon. So when you when you for me, those are not going to be easily found in Mexico. But with the click of a button, they're here. And all of those I've actually gotten not through the United States, but from the Mexican Amazon. And so there's so many books in Mexican Amazon. And of course, uh, I order Audible and I have Kindle books, too. But I think most of my viewers agree there's nothing better than curling up with a good real book, which I do. That's my guilty pleasure. And the final before the final is um, I would a word of caution. Amazon makes their money by um, and their whole existence by guaranteeing delivery. They're very reliable, very, very reliable. However, um, you have to be careful when you order something from Amazon. You have to see whether it's being delivered by Amazon or by a private company. Remember, a lot of things are listed through Amazon and Amazon hand, handles the money, but they charge these manufacturers or resellers a fee and then those guys ship it out to you. And um, I've had problems even recently, but the most interesting one was years ago, I was living in a city called Leon in the state of Guanajuato. And I ordered two books. One was just a normal book and it was coming actually from America. And uh, I paid $5 delivery and it got here in about five or six days. DHL truck, nice, simple delivery, perfect. The other book I ordered at the same time on the same order was a used book. It was a textbook, slightly expensive, but it was like $22 on a delivery fee. And I thought, well, that's weird. It's really expensive, but I really wanted that book. Well, so I ordered that. 
but it didn't show up with the other delivery. And it turns out that it was shipped by a used bookstore um, that was selling it through Amazon. Five, Five months, months later, later, I'm sitting in my living room, minding my own business, when all of a sudden I hear this, no one even knocked, I just heard this bicycle bell. And I open the door and there's this old guy, old Mexican guy, on an old Mexican bicycle with a basket in the front of it and my book inside it, he was delivering it five months later. But I did get it. I did get it. So just be aware that if you are ordering from Amazon um, and you do want a product and it's being shipped by a third party, um, it may arrive with maybe something missing or too much of something or something broken, or it may be weeks or months till you get it and you have to cancel the order. So just be aware of that. Don't blame Amazon on that one. Um, so just once again, I caution you. Okay, we've gotten to the end of the video. Now is the thing that you really need to be careful of. And the only reason I said that is I've learned a lot of things. But the one thing about Amazon that hurt the most was I didn't get my products. And it's happened several times, especially since I live here. And the reason is my shipping address. Okay, in America, you've got you, you put your street address, your house number or apartment number, your city, state and zip and bam, you got it. Not so in Mexico. No, besides your city, state and zip, um, they want to know the colonial you live in or the, the region that you live in. And you have to put that in and your street number, but also the cross street. You gotta put the cross street on it also. However, there's one more thing for me, is if you live on a serrada or a, a dead end uh, court or a circle or whatever you would wanna call it, um, where I live, they actually have a name for each one of those little dead ends and it's kind of on a concrete wall as you drive into it. And, and mine was Sorado, Uvia de Oro, da ba ba ba, whatever. And I thought, well, I don't need to put that. It's a bunch of Spanish words. I've got the cross street, I've got my street, I've got my house number, I've got the city, state, zip. Perfect. Uh, no, no. For some reason, if it doesn't have this on the concrete wall, they're not coming in. I've lost, I've had two or three packages turned away. Um, uh, I've had things that have taken three months to finally get to me through the mail. Um, I had an Uber food delivery person. We never got our pizzas because they were like two blocks away. And they go, well, we can't find you. And uh, if you want us to, we gave him the correct address and, and directions. He goes, well, I'll charge you more if you want me to bring it to you. And I'm like, well, no, forget it. And he hung up and he charged me for the pizzas. I never did get the money back. But the whole point, my whole point is put all of the information you can on that. Now, if you don't have enough room on the address, delivery address, fear not. Delivery instructions at the very bottom, there's a place to put further instructions. That's where you will put any other information. They do read it. And if you don't provide enough information, the driver calls a dispatch, if you're lucky, and then they call you and they ask you where you are. You tell them and then the person arrives. Oh, that's if you speak Spanish. Make it easy for them so they don't have to call you and you don't have to say, I don't understand, I don't speak Spanish. So make it easy, be sure to do that. So that's my tip. So that covers it for Amazon. I hope that was helpful to you. Write your comments, hit that subscribe button. Please give us a thumbs up, it's so important. And you know all of the other stuff, but share the videos if you like them. And if I miss something about Amazon, please write it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for your time.